from PRX. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, uh, friends beyond the binary, my $20 patrons, uh, this podcast is just for you, uh, patrons, uh, twenty at the $20 level. Uh, so thank you for supporting it. This is a, r- a rare treat, uh, and uh, let's say uh, you, you, you truly are the ones uh, enabling the show. Uh, so let's get on with the show. Thanks, patrons. Uh, Hey, everybody, this is Scoots here. This is another one of these summer uh, fun uh, extra episodes. Uh, And this particular episode is something that comes out on Patreon now. We used to put these out in the public feed. We moved them over to Patreon. They're Fearless Flyer episodes. So what you're going to hear coming up is an intro from an old Fearless Flyer episode that was released publicly. And then an entire episode that was just on Patreon uh, of a summer Fearless Flyer. So it'd be really fun uh, and uh, really popular along with uh, other things on Patreon. Uh, we put we still put them out and on Apple Podcasts. So yeah, uh, enjoy and I uh, hope you're enjoying your summer. I hope you enjoy these uh, this summer review of uh, Fearless Flyer. Uh, good night, everybody. Hey, everybody, Scoots here. Uh, you know, sleep, the whole purpose of sleep with me is not just to put you to sleep, but to let you know that you're not alone in the deep, dark night, to keep you company in the deep, dark night. And I have to ask you, do you feel less alone in the deep, dark night because of the show? And if you say yes, can you do me a favor and either support the show right now or set a reminder in your phone? Can you take a minute or two? And if you're in a position where you can afford to support the show at 5 10 or $20 a month or support it annually and save a little bit money on your subscription, please don't wait. Set a reminder right now and just ask yourself, does the podcast put me to sleep on a regular basis or does it make me feel less alone in the deep, dark night? Is the show there for me? Because if you're in a position to support the show, if only if you can afford to and that resonates with you, I I need you to support the show. I got to get through to this percentage of people that are willing to support the show and can afford to support the show, but are kind of stuck. Either you're falling asleep or you just kind of like a couple people that signed up for this and said, hey, just remind everybody over and over again, set a reminder right now in your phone. Tell your smart speaker, tell your phone, remind me tomorrow at 9 a.m. to go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron and sign up for the show. That not only puts me to sleep, but makes me like less alone in the deep, dark night that keeps me company because I want it to be there. And I want to be there because he- I've heard from a lot of people that can't afford to support the show and some people that are just unwilling to do it. Uh, but I know the majority of people are out there and I just got to get through a small percentage of you. That's it. That's it's a hard task, believe it or not, I guess because the show puts you to sleep. So please take that action. Uh, Even if you decide not to support the show, set a reminder anyway and say, hey, this show does keep me company in the deep dark night. And then go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. That's the sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. But sign up and support the show. I don't want you to miss out on subscriber summer, but I don't want us to get to a point where the the show cuts back or the show stops coming out uh, just because I didn't reach out and make it clear enough who I'm trying to get a hold of. I'm only trying to get a hold of a small percentage of people that are listening to the show and you're one of them if you're not along you say hey yeah i use this show on a regular basis i can't afford 10 bucks a month or i could cancel something and i just needed that reminder to make a reminder so make a reminder night right now sleep with me podcast.com slash patron sleep with me podcast.com slash patron or uh, uh, if you want to support the show on apple podcast sleep with me podcast.com slash apple thanks everybody all right, everybody, it is time to talk about tonight's sponsor, Helix Sleep. And I want to know what mattress you get matched with. Go to helixsleep.com slash sleep and take that two-minute quiz and then check out which model of Helix you want to get because Helix has got this new collection, Helix Elite. They also have mattresses for big and tall sleepers, even a mattress just for kids. And if you take that Helix quiz, you can find the mattress best for you and your body or you and your partner body. And that personalized mattress is shipped straight to your door free of charge. Helix knows there's no better way to test out a mattress than in your own home, in your own bed. That's why they offer a 100 night trial and a 10 to 15 year warranty to test out your new Helix mattress. And the reason they have so many different mattress models to choose from and that handy dandy quiz to match you with the right one. You know, they got models with 
with memory foam for optimal pressure relief if you sleep on your side. More responsive foam to cradle your body for stomach and back sleepers. Enhanced cooling features to keep you from overheating at night. And every Helix mattress has a hybrid design. Individually wrapped steel coils. Premium foam layers. Perfect combination of comfort and support. And like I said, I sleep on my side. I sleep on my stomach. I like to sleep cool. And that's how I got matched with the Helix Dusk. I picked the Helix Dusk Lux. And I love this mattress. I can, but you, you could find the best mattress for you by taking that Helix mattress quiz. Set up as fast and easy. Come straight to your door. Delivered in a box for free. Helix mattresses all come with a 10 to 15 year warranty depending on the model. And Helix is offering 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. You go to helixsleep.com slash sleep. This is their best offer yet. It won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now. That's helixsleep.com slash sleep. And you can take the quiz for free. I don't know what you're waiting for uh, because I'm sleeping so good. I want you to sleep so good too. So take that quiz. Let me know what you got. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody, it's time for the Sleepy Supporter Zone, the Deep Dark United Sleepy Supporter Zone. And, you know, I'm not internationally known, but I do know the uh, Sleepy Supporter Zone, Deep Dark United, we're all in this together. There are people who can't afford to support the show or who don't wish to support the podcast, but the podcast exists by direct listener action. We don't have anybody that supports the show, any companies that support the show for the sake of supporting the podcast. So whether it's the sponsor, or supporting the show directly, it relies on listeners. But if you're an international listener, if you're not in the U.S. or in Canada, we have PolySleep as a sponsor. We don't have any international sponsors. So it really is key for you to set an alarm and, and let yourself say, hey, I really want to support Sleep and Me. Because uh, a large portion of our listeners are, are international and we're at, well, I want to have a little competition. I want to make it fun. If you hear this message and you decide to support the show on Patreon, you could do the $10 free trial on Patreon too. Uh, even if you just want to try it out uh, or you spread the word and you kind of do it on social media and let me know about it. Let me know where you're from. Uh, send me a message. Use the contact form on our website. Let me know. We'll have a competition. We'll see where's the show growing the most. Right now it's London, I got to tell you. But where can we get international supporters from? Uh, whether you're supporting the show by spreading the word or supporting it so the show can be here for free for everybody else and for you on a regular basis by supporting the show on Patreon. Let me know about it. Uh, and uh, I'll thank you right here on the Sleepy Support zone because right now i'm looking for players uh we're looking i don't know what the transfer window even means but uh we're looking for the transfer window to get open and have you come on in and visit so uh, that's the first part of the sleepy supporter zone the second is you getting the support you need there's a resources including international resources in our show notes if you're having a tough time right now uh it's also about being a part of positive change taking action learning more not just saying black lives matter not just saying stop a api hate not just saying support ukraine but taking action to learn more uh, and to take action. So there's links to resources we can do that. And one of the things we've been doing all month is uh, helping raise money for the Trevor Project through the Orlando Park Stop fundraiser, orlandoparkstop.com slash charity. And, you know, I got a whole bunch of pressed pennies and I put uh, $500 up in pre-matching, which we haven't even we haven't even got there yet. Uh, and I'd really love uh, for us to get to that $500 or beyond in supporting this amazing fundraiser. And I'd love to send you a pressed penny that Ray has. So support the Orlando Park Stop fundraiser. And then again, let me know about it. Use the contact form on our website and let me know about it. Uh, thanks, everybody. Uh, that's the, uh, that's, uh, oh, Mystery Bard, a lot of people help out on this show. Who are they? This posty poster song sounds like an earful. Wrote the theme song. Edits episodes too. Carl W. The Ledge. Also edits episodes Ashley, too. Kenny, Scotty, Jennifer. Runner, 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 runner. Eric and the team write us down. I am the mystery bar. I do the lullabies, yeah. I do commissions at Jonathan Man. I'll write a song for you. Any reason at all. You can tell me the story and I'll make it personal. You see the kindness shine straight on through. When the listeners form their own Facebook group. Keith, Stacy, Sarah, Julie, and Jennifer. These are your narrators. Get support, dear scooter on and support the sponsors you can find anything you want at sleep with me podcast.com and we're so proud that we could dance rusty biscuit lois and a
Anna. Leah does the transcripts. Thanks, Mr. Bard. Don't forget, sleep phones are the most comfortable way to listen to sleep with me. We have our own branded sleep phones. And if you want to support the show, you got to use our link, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sleep phones. Uh, since they're not a sponsor, uh, it's sleep phones merch. We only get supported if you use that link, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sleep phones and use sleep with me at checkout. Most comfortable way to listen to sleep with me in a soft, uh, stretchy headband. Uh, that's it. What do you say? We slow it down and get on with the show. Right, hey, you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble with getting to sleep, trouble staying is so well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that's here to put you to sleep. We do it the bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights and press play. I'm going to do the rest. Uh, what I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you can set aside whatever's keeping you awake, whether it's uh, thoughts and thinking... My, my, my brain just started thinking right when I was in the middle of that sentence, uh, like physical sensations, uh, emotional things, distractions, mind, you know, mind moving, uh, hopefully no mind melding. Maybe we'll talk about that because I don't even know what that really means. Uh, but whatever it is that's keeping you awake, um, uh, I'd like to take your mind off of that. I'm going to try to create a safe place where you can set aside whatever's keeping you awake. I'm going to smooth it. I'm going to pat it. I'm going to rub it down. And I'm going to say safe place. Uh, just like it was the 80s. You know, but, but whether you're 80 or your name's be incorrectly said by me, BB88, uh, who will be returning to the screen soon, I believe. Uh, I'm glad you're here, and I really hope I can help you fall asleep. If you're new, oh, what am I do? I'm going to my voice across the deep, dark night. I'm going to use lulling, soothing, creaky dulcet tones, pointless meanders, comforting presence if i can provide that i'll be here i'll be here to keep you company while you fall asleep now if you're new uh here's the structure of the show first six minutes are business it's a sleep podcast so we got to put them up front uh if you're new not super important if you're a regular listener please remember uh, uh how you want to support the show when your hand hits the fridge tomorrow sponsors are spreading the word or supporting us on patreon those are the most efficient ways and uh, uh, so that's the first six minutes. Then we have an intro, which we've just begun. That's usually about 12 to 14 to 17 to 11 minutes. Um, and usually I try to create a metaphor. Sometimes I overuse alliteration. Tonight will be a perfect opportunity because I try to create a metaphor to describe what the podcast is. And, you know, tonight I might be using mind melding and mentalists, uh, because I don't know if I've talked about any of that in the intro before, and I, you know, it's a subject my mind can barely scratch the surface of. Yeah, but I'm glad you're here. I, I, I said that already. Thanks, brain. My brain likes to remind me, like, uh, but I'm here to create a safe place, so, you know, we can make mistakes, by the way, brain. Glad you're here, brain. I uh, wouldn't be here without you, but um, little uh, inside joke between me and my brain. It's not a joke, my brain just said. It wouldn't be here without my brain. Of course, I'm relying on you. Oh, boy. I mean, I'm so lucky to have a brain that overthinks. Uh, okay, save the sarcasm for, uh, like, uh, my limbic system. Totally. Yeah, I, I don't like it. Like, I'm told, don't go somatic on me, brain. Whatever that means. Oh, that's the emo Is that the limbic system? Please, brain, tell me more. That was sarcasm. I got to get out of my brain. So, anyway, uh... So it's the intro, and it's kind of to set the mood. If you're new, it's to kind of welcome you. Some people skip the intro. Some people fall asleep during the intro. People call their pets during the intro. People put, like do lotion, you know, lotion application, uh, pillow placement, uh, you know, adjusting, you know, making sure the top's on your water, your lights are shutting out, whatever it is, uh, that's what the intro's here for. It's for prepping or for falling asleep. You can't really misuse the intro. Uh, then there'll be a story portion of the show. Tonight we're going to be covering the Fearless Flyer, the summer, this summer in Fearless Flyers maybe, or, or I, I, I think and explaining what Trader Joe's is, and then, you know, me carping, as they say, about how Trader Joe's doesn't sponsor the podcast. Uh, and why would they when I just give them free advertising and spend all my money there? Uh, 
Yeah. You know, and why do I make this podcast? I had trouble falling asleep, believe it or not. Uh, but if you're new, you're also under, you're under no pressure to fall asleep. Um, and you're under no pressure to listen. I'll be here to keep you company. This podcast doesn't actually put you to sleep. It's here as companion while you drift off. Uh, I'll be here at your side or at the foot of your bed or across the room, you know, keeping company. And as you drift off, I'm here just to distract you. I'm here in a service role. And if you want, I could even, you know, I, if like if it helps, you could picture me pet, like uh, curled up like a pet on the ground in a roll, you know, rolled up uh, like, a, like a puppy. Uh, actually, I think regular dogs are better curling up in balls than puppies. Uh, puppies do more lounging. Uh, so that's the intro, then the story, then there's some thank yous at the end. So you shouldn't feel any pressure to fall asleep. I'll be here for an hour. There are a percentage of listeners that don't fall asleep, and I'm here whether you're asleep or you're awake. I'll be here for you. Uh, I'm dedicated. I've been doing the show uh, when this comes out for over four years because uh, uh, you, you deserve a good night's sleep. That, that's really uh, one of the things that drives me. The other thing that drives me is I've been there uh, feeling alone, tossing and turning. And if my goofing around can help, uh, I'd be honored to. So no pressure to fall asleep, no pressure to listen. Like, believe me, you're going to quickly learn. Because, uh, okay, so I had these two words that popped into my brain. Uh, I guess technically it would be three words, mind meld and mentalist. Uh, and I think mentalists uh, uh, probably were people that perform. I don't even know what a mind meld is. I, I think it's like similar to a mind reading I think it's like if you take a mind reader in a, in a seance and you combine them uh, into a magic show, that may be, that's one kind of mind meld. You know, the other kind of mind meld, I think, it, well, like maybe there's three kinds. I guess, oh boy, I didn't realize how deep we could go with this mind melding stuff. I guess then there's another one, you know, that usually happens in a laboratory with Tesla coils and bubbling stuff. Uh, and, you know, someone with an assistant, a scientist with the E, V to the I to the L to be, you know, maybe just a, like a genius, misguided genius scientist, uh, or just a misguided scientist too. So that's one kind of mind melding where you're combining two minds or, you know, and then there's like, um, the movie, this would be, I guess this is mind melding. It's mind changing though. I guess it isn't melding. Uh, there's the movies, like, um, of course, none of the names. They, like, the one I watched the most as a kid was uh, Kirk Cameron and uh, Dudley Moore, uh, where they changed, brain, like, they their minds, like, uh, cro- I don't think they melded or big. That was more, that wasn't a mind melding either. Pondering mind melding in, in cinema. Uh, it's, of course, 301. It's uh, by adjunct professor Scooter. So there, there's one with Jodie Foster, I think, um, uh, maybe. And I remember the one with Kirk Cameron and Dudley Moore. I think um, who else has been in a mind melding one? But, but those are like more like switcheroo movies. I think they're usually called the sw- the switcheroo, sixteen to thirty one or something. 31 going on 16, that was a more modern one, I think. It was something like that. 16 going on, th- 12 going on 30. I guess it's more of a brain change uh, or consciousness change. I don't, I guess it is a full brain change. Because uh, in the Dudley Moore, Kirk Cameron one, uh, Kirk Cameron's a teen and uh, Dudley Moore's a surgeon and the brain switch. So then uh, the high school body of Kirk Cameron as Dudley Moore's brain. And I know I can hear what you're saying. Isn't Dudley Moore English and Kirk Cameron's like uh, from the Midwest? And I'd say possibly. I'm not sure. You may be getting Arthur. It'd be cool if Arthur changed his brain with Dudley Moore. What do, okay, here's a question. Being John Malkovich, is that an example of mind melding in cinema? That'll be on the quiz uh, in my course. I have the first Coursera course never to have zero customers because uh, uh, I only ask que- questions. It's, what's the course? It's questions about mind-melding in modern cinema. 
cinema or sim, 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 cinemina, well, one of those things. Uh, so I guess we like there like mind melding's a topic I can talk about clearly. And uh, here's the thing: I'll I'll uh, I'll take my meld to my mind right now and make a proposal for you. Were you thinking about whatever was keeping you awake while, while I was going on that tangent there? And I didn't even get to mentalists, but uh, maybe for, I'll have to save that for another time. That is one of the characters uh, that I want to write. And one of the more, like, they're, they're a kind of magician, in my opinion. I, I don't know. I'm not a foremost expert on mentalism. And I think I find all magic, like, I easily fooled. So I love magic and I love mentalism, you know, when it's for entertainment purposes only. Like, don't, don't, don't try melding with my mind. Uh, cause it'll be like, it'll be your problem. It'll, it'll be good luck with that. Yeah. But like, I love like, uh, you know, like they'd say, like, this is a very basic example of mental. They say, think of a number between one and 1000 and they, and they would guess the number instantly. And you'd say, how the heck did you do that? Uh, they say 964 and you say, whoa, and they say, well, I mind meld, you know, maybe I, maybe they did mind meld, uh, that would be more of a number, like, so that's a mentalist. I don't know what that has to do with anything other than I think mentalists, maybe that's part of their act. I don't want to say that, but their performance, uh, that at some point they mind meld with like an audience member, you know, to do something cool. But yeah, so, so yeah, by the way, it's a podcast to put you asleep, believe it or not. I'm, I'm here to help you fall asleep. I'm just here to ramble, to distract you with stuff just on the edge of inane banter, uh, you know, ba barely, you know, barely banter, kind of like with a banter cast. Uh, so I'm glad you're here. The reason I make this show is because I've been there. I had, I have like a, uh, Woke up at five this morning, so I'm um, tossing and turning, mind racing, trouble getting back to trouble staying asleep, I guess, in that case. Uh, so if I can help you, it would be my honor, because I really do deserve to think you deserve, I really do deserve to think that you deserve a good night's sleep, uh, and I hope I can help this podcast. So unfortunately, it doesn't work for everybody. I get, you know, uh, clearly, but some of you may have already hung up, and I understand that. Some of you may still be listening. And believe me, I got it. I've gotten every email already. So don't get it. Don't, you know, just go, you know, dude, move on. Check out uh, some, maybe check out some Coursera courses or something. LibriVox. Uh, there's other podcasts out there that, uh, you know, or, you know, nature sounds, uh, old time radio. That's another thing that's popular to fall asleep to. So check some of that stuff out. I'm sorry. I can't help. Uh, but you know, give it a few tries. That's what almost every review says. Uh, first time you listen to the show, you're like, what the heck? Second time you say, what's up with it? Why is this, uh, why is this dulcet so creaky? And ideally the third or fourth time you start falling asleep really good and I become your boyfriend. So I'm here to help. Uh, I appreciate you of all the podcasts out there choosing this one to give a try to. Uh, and as I said, and as they say in every intro, I really hope and I really yearn. I work very hard, so I hope I help you fall asleep. Thanks for stopping by. Sleep With Me is brought to you by Progressive, where customers who save by switching their home and car save nearly $800 on average. Quote at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. National average 12-month savings of $793 by new customers surveyed who saved with Progressive between June 2021 and May 2022. Potential savings will vary. Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble, getting to sleep, trouble, staying asleep? Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do with a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights, and press play. What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside whatever's keeping you awake. Uh, whether it's uh, thoughts, uh, feelings, uh, physical sensations, uh, changes in time, uh, temperature, uh, routine, travel, whatever's keeping you awake, I'd like to take your mind off stuff. I'd uh, 
like to keep you company, I'm going to send my voice across the deep, dark night. I'm going to use lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones, pointless meanders, uh, superfluous tangents, pl- plenty of, you know, twists and turns. Uh, I'm here, I'm, you know, I'm your, I'm your boar bud, and I, I don't know if any of you are new uh, $20 patrons, because uh, uh, usually at this part of the show I say if you're new, here's a couple of things. Uh, structurally, what to expect. Uh, you keep the show going, so I just start off with a, like a little teaser. Uh, then we have an intro. I don't know how long this intro will be, because we're going to go through two free, two different fearless flyers tonight. Uh, so I'm going to leave time for that. Uh, uh, and there won't be any thank yous and good nights, uh, just because this is a special uh, episode, other than a big thank you to you that's listening. Uh, for supporting the show and also getting your uh, Patreon feed set up so you could listen to the show, because it's really, uh, you know, it, it uh, kind of reinforces, hey, you really are bringing this show value. And uh, these uh, these uh, occasional rewards tied to our goals is uh, kind of like, uh, I, I keep, it's uh, uh, to kind of try to get... Uh, People on board to realize that the the Patreon needs to grow as the podcast grows. Uh, it just it, it keep even, and then I think uh, you all know that, and that's why your goal is kind of uh, usually pretty. They say, okay, well, uh, the, the, like, uh, what do we like? Uh, usually, the Patreon, the twenty dollar goal is is to try to add uh, a little bit less than half of the cards that are still invalid uh, for the month. Uh, like not the ones that the long-term invalid cards, and then the ten-dollar goal is to like uh, add an equivalent number of patrons to all of the cards that are invalid. Yeah, uh, because you you're already you know do, doing a big part. So uh, structurally, what's that? To, well, that's what to expect. Here's what to uh, other things to expect. You don't need to listen to this. You could listen to it during the day or another time, or you don't need to listen at all. You listen at your leisure, and there's no pressure to fall asleep. I'm gonna be here for about an hour. Uh, running through a grocery list, uh, and uh, or not a grocery list. I'll probably be making. A gro- well, this will be more of a, oh, I wish I made a grocery list of this stuff. I actually, I think I may have. We'll see. I haven't looked at these t- t- ones in a while. Uh, but you know, there's like a laundry list, and laundry list is used, I guess, more figuratively. Because then I said, well, what the heck? As soon as I said grocery list, I thought a laundry list. And I said, what the heck is a laundry list, really? I mean, the way I've been trained in laundry, and actually I've dialed it uh, as I've been uh, parenting, and uh, I've uh, changed my laundry habits from even when I was young. We always traditionally uh, uh, were, uh, if you needed clothes and they weren't washed, you washed, you did a lot of laundry at my house growing up, and there was whites and, and colors, I think were the only two. Uh, I think that's the way we separated our laundry. Maybe there was delicates if, if someone wanted to wash something separately. And we didn't have a whole lot of, well, I guess we had the uh, typical laundry drama, you know, too much suds, uh, but that might have been on purpose from watching it in a movie. There was also a time, uh, this is probably a whole separate podcast episode, but, uh, well, there'd be times uh, because we were, uh, Six kids. We didn't always get the, our new new clothes, right? And so if you got a new outfit, uh, it was a big deal, especially because we wore a uniform to school. So the non-uniform days, you wanted, especially in prepubescence and puberty, you wanted to kind of look good. And so we would get, like, usually one outfit. Like, I'm thinking of the spring and the summer uh, to wear to, like, the school picnic or the dress-down day, they called it. Um and I remember I got the one I got uh, the day I wore it to school. Of course, it was like a pair of like gray off-white shorts, I think, uh, and a pen exploded. The first day I wore shorts, a pen exploded in my pocket, uh, and I was devastated. And I didn't really. I should. I guess I should have asked my mom for help. I don't think there was any helping these. But then I tried to wash them with bleach uh, to bleach the stain out, and I put so much bleach in there, the, pen, the shorts actually disintegrated. I mean, not a hundred percent, but. Uh, I mean, that'll be go on my laundry list about laundry. But, I mean, I, I can say if you had an expansive laundry list, you'd have delicates, uh, uh, colors, 
whites and uh, towels, maybe. And then maybe if you added a fifth one, you'd say bedding. But usually, for me, I, I don't know, bedding and towels, uh, I'll do together for the most part, except uh, drying. Usually, that fitted sheet causes a lot of issues in a duvet cover. I just experienced that, that last week. Uh, I don't have a lot of white clothes, neither does my daughter. So we actually just do towels and bedding and then laundry and then... Yeah, I, I think, I can't think of it. I have like a white dress shirt from my brother's wedding over a year ago that I'm waiting to wash uh, till I have something else to wash it with. Uh, so that's, uh, that's uh, um, I guess that's on the list. Uh, but what else? Uh, so that's a laundry list. They say, well, you're not, I, th- I don't know. I guess I haven't heard that terminology. Maybe it has fallen out of parlance. Because uh, what do you say? I'm putting you on my laundry list? Or I say, well, I just I got a laundry list of things. That, it's more of a to-do list now. I mean, would a laundry list be like, okay, I need socks. And was it a list of laundry, like a packing list? Uh, I know some people that know what a laundry list is. They're like, scooch, it's this. Uh, and I say, okay, well, uh, I didn't know that. Because, uh, yeah, you say, well, list of laundry. I say, well, it's more of, we call it a packing list now. You say, you got your underwear, check, uh, socks. Those are the first two things I usually pack. Uh, because these are, e- e- you know, they really don't have to be folded. I use a little cubic cube, uh, but shove them in there. Uh, then you need shirts. Uh, okay. Maybe you dress your shirt, okay. Pants, uh, okay. What pants am I wearing? Shorts, is it going to be shorts? And the only, the main place I travel is to my parents' cabin or whatever camp, uh, and I actually leave clothes there. Uh, clothes that are like, I say, well, I don't know if I want to donate this. I'll just, uh, well, actually, I don't even need to do it anymore. I just have them in a bin. And so when I go to visit them, uh, not in Florida, but in, uh, Upstate New York. Uh, I brought one my favorite bra- bathing suit back with me, so I'll have to bring a bathing suit next time. I mean, I have a backup bathing suit, uh, but yeah, I have like shirt, t-shirts, uh, short. I think I have shorts. So I brought. I think I brought a pair of shorts back. Maybe, I guess this is working the wrong way. But for the most part, I have like a week's worth of clothes there. Even like, uh, yeah, I have like, undergarments even. Undergarments, t-shirt, and shorts, usually, and I barely wear a shirt when I'm there. I try not to. So uh, that's uh, la- that, that, uh, that's a laundry list I don't need. I say, well, what do I really need? If uh, Maybe a nicer shirt, uh, something to wear there and back, a uh, couple extra pairs of underwear and socks, uh, stuff to run in. And just in case, you know, a pair of, whatever I wear on the plane, I would say, well, if I'm going to go do something nice, I'll dress uh you know, casual, like nice casual for the plane ride. And then I have that. So I guess, what, what, what was I covering there? I have no idea. Uh, I guess a laundry list. Uh, oh, I was thinking of grocery lists and uh, lists of sleepy things, which would be kittens, uh, pillows, blankets, uh, creaky dulcet tones, snoring dogs, clouds, uh, smiles, cotton, maybe cotton candy if it's not near you, you know, fl- images of cotton candy. Uh, what else would be? I don't know why I think of bears that dress as ballerinas, but that just came in my head. I don't know how sleepy that is. Maybe because you say, well, maybe I'm asleep now. There's bears dressed as ballerinas. Yeah, they're doing the point or whatever, the uh, poussant uh, or whatever it's called, heel-toe heel. Uh, Maybe tap dancing. What is that? What kind of animal is that tap dancing? I think it's a uh, a gator buddy. A tap dancing. Shuffle ball. Shuffle off the buffalo. Shuffle ball change. Oh boy. Yeah. So those are some. Those are. If you, that's a list of sleepy things. More like a cloud. I don't know if my brain in this podcast works in lists. It works more in clouds. Uh, but yeah, here's a list of things I have to say to you. Thank you very much uh, for supporting the show at a bit level of uh, you know, equivalent to what a pizza would have cost. Uh, you know, you could still get it almost. You can almost get adult pizza delivered for twenty bucks a month a year. Uh, it wouldn't be, you know, but you'd be better off saying, "Well, let's just make our own," which will be good as we run through these uh, fearless flyers. Uh, 
but really, thank you so much for supporting the show. You can't, I can't uh, compliment you enough. Like, you're the uh, few of the fewest, or the fewest of the few. I don't know. I didn't. I haven't looked at. Uh, like this is October second. I'm recording this. Uh, I haven't looked at September statistics that closely, but probably somewhere around 750,000 different people listened to the podcast more once or more last month, and there's probably 200,000 people listening on a regular basis, consuming the podcast uh, regularly, like either four. At eight times a month uh, or more. I mean, there's some people that I bet you there's probably uh, 40,000 people that probably consume 20 or 30 episodes a month. And in fact, I'm pretty much sure of it. Uh, and so let's say there's 30,000 people that listen very regularly. I mean, near nightly or more. So five, 20 nights a month or more. Twenty nights in a month or more, probably fifty thousand, maybe maybe even a hundred thousand. I don't know. Um, uh, and then yeah, there's like about forty five hundred people that support the show. Yeah, because of how I started the Patreon, a lot of those are at the dollar level. Uh, and then yeah, it trickles down uh, to to out of that tiny percentage. So so thank you. Like it really does. Uh, especially those of you that believe in value for value, it's like. Uh, a lot goes into making the podcast. And there's a lot of stuff that goes in behind the scenes to distribute it, especially at this point that there's so many listeners. Um, and that literally wouldn't be possible because of, uh, uh, without you, the $20 sponsors and the $10 sponsors and the $5 sponsors. And $1 sponsors are important. I know people have to jump around uh, uh, and stuff too. Uh uh, but really, the, these level of sponsorships is what really keeps the show existing because there's, the, yeah, so thank you. I guess I didn't mean to turn into that. So so let's get over to Trader Joe's. So what, what do you say? Uh, so we have two of these. It'll be a trip back to summer. Uh, this one's from June 2018, the Summer Times, uh, Fearless Flyer, Volume 2, Number 6.5, Always Free and Worth Every Penny. And this is a short one, so it only has a, it's a four page uh, fold out, uh, like a regular newspaper. It starts off with drinks on us. They have French sparkling lemonade, two ninety nine for a 750 milliliter bottle. Uh, the supplier has been crafting lemonade in small, a small French village. Oh, really? I don't think I've tried this in a, if I have, it's been a while. It comes from a natural spring inside the bottling room. Okay. I got to get some of this, uh, it's two ninety nine. I think that's what uh, uh, has kept me from that. But, uh, you know, I'll think about it. I'll definitely think about it. Uh, I think they also have pink lemonade. I'm not sure if it's the French kind. But, no, I mean, that's good marketing because they said, wait a second, the, the uh, springs inside the bottling room, the image that evokes uh, makes me want to buy it. Uh, this one's big with Sophia's mom. She loves this. She, let me try it. Uh, coconut cold brew concentrate. Uh, yeah, 50%. I mean, I'm a big cold brew drinker. I know Melissa uh, would turn me on to it, one of your $20 patrons. Uh, and I've been making it and uh, refining my methods. Uh, it, this is good, though. Uh, it's a lush, unsweetened concentrate plus uh, natural coconut flavor for a tropical take. Uh, and it's best requ- constituted with water, four ninety nine for 12 ounces or 16 it was 16 fluid ounces, which makes four 12 ounces of cof- cups of coffee. So five bucks for four uh, high-end cups of coffee. Now, this one's a must-buy and always keep in stock. I keep one in the car, usually one in my podcast go bag. Uh, but now, uh, I don't know where. I know I have one in the bathroom. Mineral sunscreen stick. Uh, it is uh, 50, SPF 50, mineral sunscreen uh, stick, na- non-nano zinc oxide, uh, water resistant to 80 minutes, coconut and avocado oils, natural wax uh, waxes. It does get softer in your pocket, but uh, yeah, it, it, I have tons of those, and it's five ninety nine. It's really good because the zinc uh, keeps the sun off your face. Uh, they had watermelons for two ninety nine. I'll eat watermelons at somebody else's house, but, uh, you know, it is too much work. Uh, 
this is a hyaluronic, hydronic moisture boost serum. I don't have this. Uh, I do uh, buy their um, daily moisturizer when I remember. And but this one's eight ninety nine. It's a serum. I did try another serum of theirs, uh, but then I felt like. Uh, I, I, I felt I judged myself. I said, are you, what are you putting on uh, some sort of antioxidant serum? Who are you? Uh, snacking the day away. Quinoa and black bean infused tortilla chips. Haven't tried these. Uh, my fear with stuff like this is that good tortilla chips are so good uh, that once you had those, it's like tough to have. Like when you have something, you're like, uh, so you know what I mean? I think you know what I mean. Uh, chunky salsa. Is this our spiciest salsa? I never find myself, uh, I guess the same thing goes for salsa. I do buy Trader Joe's, hey, tr- Trader Joe, cover your ears. You know, I do tr- tr- tend to buy these from time to time, maybe to use on some sort of dish. And then I never complete them. Usually they can be good to finish, you know, or add to some, uh, red rice. Uh, but I just find it, uh, Trader Joe's uh, tortilla chips and salsa to be passable. Spicy cheese crunchies. Uh, I haven't had these. They're gluten free corn crunchies, uh, baked and not fried. And I would assume they're like uh, those uh, hot hot Cheetos. Uh, yeah, because they show uh, not even the world class shadow shadow puppetry can disguise a reach for Trader Joe's spicy cheese crunchies with the orange fingertips. Okay, page two. Flat iron steak, twelve ninety nine a pound. Uh, that is really good for grilling and marinating. Uh, barbecue rub seasoning with coffee and garlic. I think I talked about this last year. One ninety nine. I don't think I bought it this year because I still had some. And I do, do find uh, that while it's good, it's not... Oh, boy, Trader Joe's, I'm sorry. It's not great, and it does tend to uh, scorch a little. That's probably my biggest issue. Uncured beef hot dogs... Uh, they get all their, but don't, here's a piece of advice. Don't buy their grass-fed, uncured beef hot dogs. These aren't the ones. These say they're uh, just uncured. Uh, but don't buy the grass-fed ones. Trust me on that. These are without casing, so they're 100% beef, though. I can't remember if I tried those, but uh, so I can't make a judgment. Uh, sausageless sausage, uh, haven't tried that, uh, a bone in chicken thighs. Uh, chicken thighs are always good. I love gr- grilling or baking chicken thighs or frying them. If the bone in, uh, you can leave them on the grill a little longer. And they're, they're just easier uh, to grill, though you got to be careful with the skin on. Organic brown sugar barbecue sauce and marinade. I may have tried this, uh, but I can't remember. Grilled jerk chicken skewers with mango chutney. I don't think my daughter's a big fan of uh, jerk sauce. She's got enough jerk. She got one big jerk in her life. So, uh, uh, but yeah, so I don't think I've tried that. Uh, let's see. They have hamburger and hot dog buns, of course. Uh, again, that's another thing I, I recommend going to the, like a, a smaller market or a mass market. But for your, I, I don't know why. I just find that. Uh, I think his Trader Joe's specializes, like, their bakeries are probably further out. This is just a guess, but, uh, and so they freeze everything and then thaw it, and it just, uh, some of their breads can handle it, but I find the buns just, just don't handle it well. You taste it, and, uh, you just say, this is just either the mouthfeel, it tastes uh, fine, but not great. And you say, if I could go to a mass market supermarket and get something that tastes just better, for the same price, I'm sorry. Uh, just a handful, almond cashews, cranberries, Trek mix. I've been using the Super Berry or something. Really good. New Zealand organic cheddar. That sounds delicious. Uh, sandwich pickles. Uh, I don't eat enough sandwich pickles. So when I buy them, I'm like, I get stuck with them. But those sound good because you really need a pickle if you're going to have make be making burgers and stuff. Uh, they had bouquets of sunflowers and chrysanthemums. I still got to get a flower vase. Uh, so that's on my list. A lemon basil pasta salad. That sounds tasty. Citrus chicken salad. That also, I'll have to try one of these one time. 
organic Mediterranean salad salad kit. I think I did have this one. Shredded broccoli, radicchio. Uh, oh, no, I didn't. Flatbread strips uh, and roasted chickpeas. Maybe I'll try that if I see it. I've seen these ones. Enjoy your peppers. They start off green, but then they get this yellow orange. Uh, but they're two peppers for three seventy nine. Where uh, bell peppers are ninety nine cents, so you can get your own. Uh, you get for three bucks. You get three, you know, orange, uh, red, and a yellow bell pepper for three bucks. Uh, two leeks for two ninety nine. I, I would uh, like if a leeks come in a meal kit. Uh, I like uh, with uh, Green Chef. I love leeks, but. Uh, I don't know. I guess I don't have the patience if it, if it doesn't come in a meal kit to cook with them. Organic sugar plum tomatoes. Uh, I, I do like uh, their tomatoes, but they can't. When you get their plum tomatoes, sometimes again it's just unpredictable. And you can get them buy like uh, get them buy them home get them home in two days, and they uh, they stay good for a week or two. But then other days, two days later, they have already that milky taste. They say these tomatoes are going bad. So, yeah, you know, it's worth it uh, because you say, especially they have these uh, mini or heirloom tomatoes. Those are the ones I like to get. Precise mozzarella log, four ninety nine. dollars Sparkling uh, hard seltzer, no thanks. I thought that was a fresh bruschetta. Yeah, I don't know if I bought that. Green Goddess Salad Dressing. I gotta try this. Everybody says it's great. Uh, they also have a fresh uh, miso carrot dressing. That's great. I try. I finally tried that, but uh, it goes fast, so you're better off making your own. Uh, rice cow flour. I haven't tried that yet, uh, but it sounds great. One ninety nine for a twelve ounce bag in freezer section. Uh, let's see, Moroccan mint tea. I haven't tried that, but that sounds good. Pineapple juice. I do buy these. I still have a couple. Maybe I'll have one later. Oh, no, I buy the four cans. Uh, uh, this one uh, comes in a 64-ounce uh, carton, which is probably pretty good. Organic cold brew coffee, ready to drink. Uh, nitrogen infused, it says. Uh, that sounds pretty good. Uh, ten, 10 ounce bottle, two twenty nine. Uh, maple ladder, ladder cereal. We tried this at my house. It didn't. Uh, it didn't make it. Uh, it. It's a blend of chickpea, yellow corn, and rice flours. Uh, kind of a bit like those old alphabets uh, were. It's kind of what I would. But it's just it didn't. Uh, honey graham crackers. I didn't. I haven't tried those. Peach Bellini jam, gluten free whole grain bread. You know, my daughter talked me into getting a gluten free white sandwich bread from Trader Joe's like about a month ago. And it was these small slices of bread, and it was like perfect for breakfast toasting or a kid's sandwich. And then we went through it about two weeks. And then when I went to try, I said, You want to get that same bread as last time? I, I was resistant to buying it. Uh, and I said, wow, this bread's pretty good. And she said, no, I don't like that bread. And I said, well, why'd you get it last time? She said, I thought it was something else. Uh, so that didn't work out. French vanilla ice cream, I have this in my fridge. I forgot why I bought it, uh, to make something with my daughter. What did we buy it to put it? Oh, we, we uh, okay, that'll come up in another, maybe in the next. Uh, yeah, but we bought it to have uh, something a la mode. And so we still have some of that. Pink and white cookies. These are pretty good. I didn't buy them this year. But they have pink or white. They're kind of like those uh, um, animal crackers with the coating. And they usually have like little uh, sprinkles on them. Peaches and cream tart. I didn't have that. I don't even remember seeing that. Uh, these two I have. Uh, key lime pie. It's been in my freezer for about, uh, I guess, whatever, however many months it's been since... Uh, yeah, uh, this version of classic. So maybe I got to eat it at some point. Uh, it's it's been in my freezer for at least eight months. Yeah, I keep meaning to use eat it, but uh, I bought it. I bought it on a a whim. I remember one time I was on a plane, and the only channel I could watch was a channel that has Shark Bait, or whatever that show's called, Shark Tank with the business people, and then related shows. And one of the dudes from that Shark Show was trying to remake it. Like, I was stuck on... That was the only thing to watch on this plane. 
and I must not have my computer to, to do work, or I was so overworked that I was like, I need a couple hours of mindless TV. And I watched him uh, redo, like he goes at businesses and says, you're doing it all wrong. It was a key lime pie company. This is like three years ago. Then this one, Cinnamon Squares cho- Milk Chocolate Bar. I think I ate this on a live stream. It's pretty good. A bit like a Cinnamon Toast Crunch in a chocolate bar, but not so good. Again, they hit, hit it out of the park with the uh, b- breakfast, whatever it's called, b- b- uh, what do they call it? A birthday cake bar or whatever, which they have inconsistently. That's my favorite. Because I can tell you, because it's, it's still in my freezer, even though I ha- we had half of it. Uh, so that's it for this fearless flyer from uh, June. It has a lobster uh, with a top hat. It has some beautiful art on it. Uh, some other uh, drum playing being with a, a parasol. A watermelon head, uh, octopus with a bunch of uh, desserts. Uh, today's less uh, lessons and uh, uh, people flying on uh, tea and uh, cold brew. Uh, like old timey swimming people from like the nineteen hundreds. Uh, yeah, flowers, butterflies. There even a couple of butterflies in there. Bernie was looking. Okay, so this one is two months later, uh, August of 2018. Winter is coming, but not for a while. Uh, and it starts off with like a, a circus uh, from the 1900s, a picture. Well, you know what? I meant to buy these. I wonder if they still have them. Trader Joe's mini dark chocolate mint coins. Uh, they were inspired by a star shaped sweet cookie treat we offer during the holiday season. Inside, uh, you'll find a coin-shaped, uh, inside the dark chocolate coating is a coin-shaped chocolate shortbread cookie. Wait a second. Infused with mint. Uh, well, I missed out on that. Mango and cream bars, so three forty nine. Again, I don't know if you have a regular, hard, long-term listener, but I had a, a formative event with an orange creamsicle. So anything fruit and cream in a frozen bar form, I can't have, uh, like I could have, uh, like peaches and cream oatmeal, but orange creamsicle. And I don't know what it was. Like, I think up until that point, I was fine. Maybe I just had a tummy tummy at that point, And then I had a real tummy tummy after, uh, these peanut peanuts go on a date bar. I just got my daughter converted to eating dates. Uh, uh, so maybe I could look at getting this uh, because it's got a peanuts, dry roasted peanuts, a, dry, a dollop of date paste uh, with peanut butter, flaxseed meal, sea salt, uh, and that's it, five ingredients. Uh, so I have to look if, if I can get her to uh, try that, if they still have it. Uh, Kansas-style uh, barbecue sauce. I think I've had the Carolina one. Uh, uh, barbecue sauce is great for grilling. This one uh, is a long-time residence. Uh, yeah, then we had it and we wanted to bring it back. Uh, this one's a replacement and improvement. I uh, went through an ex- extensive tasting panel. Um, we're trying to balance the sugar and smokiness, a puree, tomato puree, brown sugar, molasses, a hickory smoke flavor, garlic and onion powder, savory notes, paprika and chipotle. Yeah, it comes in uh, two. Uh, Trader Joe's is a good place to get barbecue sauce. So let's just put it that way. It is. Uh, so I agree with uh, you. Got to have some barbecue sauce in your fridge anyway. This might be the one, or that other one they had. Organic hemp seed bars. This has a woman, like a bird woman, in a uh, pink a gown. Again, maybe from the eighteen hundreds, uh, and she's saying seed bars. Seed bars, back in the day, we called them bird feeders. That's pretty funny. Eh? That is funny. Uh, this is for organic hemp seed bars. Uh, Walt Women called simplicity the glory of expression. Uh, simply snacking is the most glorious form of expression of all. That's why our organic seed bars start with a simple presence. Uh, all organic e- ingredients pressed together. Grab and go snack. Uh, go, so another possible good snack. Uh, Mellow balance of nutty, crunchy, soft, and sweet, uh, versatile, convenient breakfast treat uh, 
four, uh, let's see how many, each, uh, oh, five bars, uh, 4.4 ounces, uh, in the whole box at two ninety nine. Yeah. Here's organic vanilla fudge chip ice cream. I guess like for me, like, uh, to be honest, like I say, well, I get vanilla ice cream and put stuff on there. Or I'll get maybe vanilla with cookie. Probably not, though. That's cookies and cream. I don't know. I guess for me, chips don't do it. I don't think they ever did. I mean, vanilla, mint, mint, chip, mint chip or whatever used to be one of the few go-tos. But now you can say, well, well you're going to put crushed Oreos in there. Keep your chips. I'll take the uh, mint cookies, you know. And then vanilla, I say, well, vanilla, to me, I, I guess this is a... Uh, the closest thing to a grandmother's thing, I said, vanilla does just fine on its own, vanilla ice cream, or with a bunch of crap on it. Uh, why would you also put crap in there, you know? So I guess that's my opinion on that. But this one says, would you eat in a cup? Or would you eat it in a cone? Uh, of course. Uh, with biology you know, on the phone or mo- moon, moon, you'd say moan. Uh, with apologies to a good doctor, we see it. I guess any reason? Well, I just listed a bunch of reasons why you wouldn't want to enjoy it. Uh, it really is good. I, I believe that. Uh, it's just, could we have called it chocolate chip? Maybe. I mean, I guess it's organic. I don't know. I haven't done tasting panel of organic ice creams versus non. Uh, here's one: organic organic chicken drumsticks, one ninety nine a pound. I did try to get into these. Uh, uh, I think it might be an easy way to make chicken for my daughter, and I learned that uh, drumsticks are not as easy to cook as you would think. Uh, chicken thighs are way more flavorful because there's just too many, uh, I don't know, too many variables for me in drumsticks. No offense. I'd say the occasional drumstick in a, a bucket, you know, I'll, I'll eat it, but we're at a barbecue. But I think what makes you appreciate the drumstick is that it offers you some variety in the midst of different types of chicken. Uh, how about organic baby spinach, putting the super in superfood? Oh, yeah, this is what I have for breakfast every day. Uh, uh, after I uh, fry my eggs or cook my or boil my eggs, uh, I use the water or the frying pan to cook the spinach. So, uh, organic chia seeds. I think I might have these. Uh, no, no, I have hemp heart or something uh, to add to the breakfast bread I make. Uh, they say these are good. I've been having them more with uh, Green Chef. It says a superfood powerhouse. Uh, it's got uh, omega-3s, uh, grown in Paraguay, no pesticides, uh, 4 99 for 12-ounce bag. And you'll find them in the uh, cereal aisle. Uh, cream cheese brioche pastries. I don't know what this is. A brioche bun and a cheese danish, huh? Uh, classic brioche bun, sizable center uh, with extra sweetened silky cream cheese. Uh, that sounds pretty good. I mean, I prefer a raspberry danish to a cheese danish, but uh, I may try it. Two ninety nine. Uh, let's see, uh, hummus snack packs, two for two twenty nine. Lunchbox staple, Mediterranean hummus snack pack with pita chips. Uh, I'll have to look at this for a snack for my daughter. Uh, two twenty nine, so that's like one fifteen a serving. Uh, or pack in your own bag uh, in a refrigerated case. I will, I will check that out. Uh, Here's one of their comics. It says, Flyers digested and food devoured. The fearless phlegms uh, flopped on the sand, finally filled with the food for body and mind. It looks like it has a bunch of people napping on the beach. Uh, my brother's big into these dark chocolate power berries. Again, they just seem like a little bit pricey for me. Uh, Akai, or sa- a high, uh, blueberry, cranberry, pomegranate, uh, these dark pigmented berries have two things in common. One, intense flavor, and anti- two, antioxidants. Uh, and two, they're also in the dark chocolate-covered power berries. A sweet tart treat, uh, somewhere between a superhero and a super snack. Oh, yeah, you'll find other similar treats, uh, but this is the only thing you'll find at Trader Joe's. Uh, oh, the juices are all combined to make uh, sweet tart jelly. So it's not even the real berries. No offense, uh Sounds delicious, but uh, it uh, sounds more like, like it also has cocoa flavanols, though they say. 
I said, just eat it. Hey, dude, hey, no, you know, no offense, TJ, but just eat a friggin' berry, you know. And maybe that's just because that's a trail mix I have is absolutely. Oh, this one I've been meaning to buy, and I haven't because mostly because of the uh, key lime pie in my cupboard or my freezer. But this is called every time I've seen this thing, it's called my name. It's absolutely party cake time, any time at all. The late chef Julia Child once noted, a party without a cake is really just a meeting. We wholeheartedly agree. So it's like a party cake. I've seen this thing. It looks good. Uh, Trader Joe's party cake is here without any artificial extras. Uh, It's two round layers of fluffy white cake with a rich vanilla buttercream frosting, hand-decorated with a uh, rainbow colored confetti sprinkles that's what catches my eye and they don't skip on the sprinkles either uh we leave the top uh pristine and unsprinkled so you could personalize it or just eat it all or if you were scoots buy it and put it in the fridge for uh you know too long uh it says one cake serves eight to ten people i don't believe that i would say four i would say you could probably get six servings out of it uh one two I guess you'd have to go with eight. But, but yeah, I guess eight servings. Uh, so that's eight people, I guess. You're right. Uh, but six people, because just two people would want seconds at least. Um, it's only six ninety nine. It really does look good. And they sometimes in uh, the one in Oakland, at least, they'll put it by the checkout line. So then you say, hmm, what did you say? Uh, nice to meet you. You're part of KK. I don't party anymore, but when I do, it's pretty much eating cake and drinking soda. So, oh boy, I like, is that a rainbow confetti sprinkles all over? Oof, oof, oof. Uh, yeah, oh boy. Well, you know what? I've got a uh, key lime pie at home. I'm sorry. Uh, what can I say? There's, you know, only room. Uh, I mean, unless I eat you right away. So that's kind of how it goes in my house. Uh, dark chocolate toasted sesame caramels. Uh, I don't even know what this is. Uh, sesame seed. Uh, power to elevate even simplest recipes, uh, you know, with hamburger buns. Uh, without pureed sesame, tahini and hummus wouldn't be, you know, good. Yeah, stir fries. Uh, look no further than dark chocolate toasted sesame car- or caramels. Uh, Soft, sweet caramel, nutty toasted sesame seed flavor, a savory, sweet, complimentary combination, and a layer of milk chocolate with crispy, with crispy, crunchy biscuit pieces and even more sesame seeds. And then another, then another shell. That sounds pretty interesting. Again, my fear is, uh, that this will end up with all the other Trader Joe's stuff. That Like, I have some of it. I kind of like it. But then the next week I go to Trader Joe's and I see something else. Uh, that's why I stopped with that key lime pie so far. Uh, this one I think we've had as a snack. Uh, mochi rice nuggets. Crispy, crunchy. Uh, made from glutinous, uh, sticky rice. Uh, sometimes you think of uh, mochi ice cream. However, uh, it also comes in other forms. Uh yeah, this is uh, like a version of a snack they had at someone had at a Japanese airport. Uh, rice is turned into a silky smooth plate paste, uh, and then they stretch that into large notes, uh, and then it. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I've had this or not. Maybe I have. Uh, yeah, crispy, crunchy. I think I've had it. It's pretty good. I don't know. I've had one from there. That was a, I said it was mochi rice, uh, but it tasted like a little bit like, uh, what is that stuff called? Uh, you uh, Rice crispy Treats. Here's something. My daughter kind of gave up on eating grapes. Uh, but these are Tomcord grapes, a uh, dark purple gem, your crossbreed of Concord and Thompson grapes, uh, blue black, uh, hue, aromatic flavor of the Concord, Thompson sweetness, uh, Maybe I'll try them. Uh, Two ninety nine for one pound container in the fresh po- produce section. There's also a star down here. I'm not sure what it's from. It says you may find small edible trace seed, much like white white seeds in watermelon. Oh, I guess that's like seedless grapes. You can find that in the seedless grapes sometimes. A chipotle vegetable quesadillas. Uh, haven't tried these. Are they in the freezer section? Yeah. 
three forty nine for a twelve ounce box. Uh, uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I guess I prefer to make my quesadillas at home. Uh, let's see what's in there, though. Uh, flour tortilla, Monterey Jack and cheddar, dried jalapenos. Oh, wait a second. Marinated in garlic and tomato. That does sound pretty good. I don't know what makes it. I guess just because it doesn't have any meat, it's a vegetable. But the cheese usually makes me think it's... Uh, there's gluten-free mac and cheese. Uh, it uh, combined cheddar, Swiss, Havarti, and Gouda. Uh, it's extra thick and creamy. Some gluten-free bechamel to the four cheese bin, b- blend. Uh, uh, then there's a corkscrew rotini made with corn, rice, and lentil and quinoa flour. It's a toothsome, weighty, gluten-free mac and cheese. It's just as delicious as any of we pasta compatriots. Where people were saying, wow, that's gluten-free. Not, wow, that's gluten-free. That's gluten-free. Uh, 349, 12-ounce package uh, in the freezer section. Uh, Mediterranean-style orzo pasta salad. I think this, oh, oh no, I haven't had this, but I've had their orzo or orzo that comes in there. They have a Greek chicken in their uh, prepared meal section that sometimes I'll get. It's really good. And it comes with the orzo pasta with olives, uh, diced onions, crumbled feta cheese. So it might be similar. Really good. Uh, what else should we be looking at? How about a uh, chicken burrito bowl? Uh, I haven't had this, but it's a winner. It says a seasoned chicken breast. Maybe I have once. Brown rice, red quinoa, black beans, corn, bell peppers, cheddar cheese, and a hearty bowl. Southwest style smoky che- Maybe I've had this once. Uh, 22 grams of protein. This sounds pretty good to keep in the freezer, actually, for lunch. Uh, 22 ounces of pro- grams of protein. Uh, you could eat it. You could actually make a burrito or tacos or put it in a salad. Yeah, uh, one point six ounces, uh, three forty nine. Uh, here's something I use almost daily: uh, moisturizing face lotion, SPF fifteen. Uh, it's here to protect and moisturize your skin all summer long and other seasons too. Suitable for all skin types, non-greasy, enriched with uh, alphabet soup of vitamins, including A, C, and E, PABA free, non-cosmogenic, or whatever which means it doesn't clog old Scoots' pores. Uh, it offers your skin broad-spectrum protection from UVA and UVB. And a four-ounce bottle, three ninety nine. You'll find it in our skincare section. Yeah, then it has a sun over a piece of rope uh, saying, I thought I knew Radiance, and then I started using Trader Joe's hydrating face sheet mask. It's down there on the left. Uh, how about this F- fresh and flashy Alstro Emeria, 20 stems, four ninety nine, often referred to by Peruvian Livy or li- li- Lily or Lily the Incas. Uh, it's uh, an ethereal beauty, gorgeous flowers, uh, uh, shipped from Colombia. Have a terrific vase of life uh, if you change the water because they are thirsty. Assortment of variety colors, so each bunch comes in a single color and long straight stems with multiple blooms per stem. They look stunning, and uh, they have a greater value, uh, four ninety nine. Get them while they last. It's always on my list is to have flowers, uh, but you know you got have I got to get some vases, uh, vases, vases. You say vase, I say vase. I'll hit it, TJ Maxx. Uh, Hydrating face sheet mask. Uh, Single-use sheets are all the rage in the world, and our sheet mask is truly top of the line. 100% cotton to make the sheet. Uh, the ingredients is soaked in uh, hyaluronic acid and honey, rose hips, uh, camellia oils, uh, chamomile, green tea, turmeric, uh, propolis, uh, pomegranate, blue algae. And yeah, natural cucumber fragrance. Uh, maybe I'll try this out. Uh, up my beauty a bit. Uh, sold individually, portable. Uh, slip one in a birthday card for your bestie. Three ninety nine. They typically sell from three ninety nine up to nine ninety nine. But they'll do it for Trader Joe's one ninety nine for all the you know treat your face right one ninety nine. 
I think me and Sophia will have to have a spa day. Gluten free multigrain bread. Uh, I haven't had this one. Again, I, I, I make my own multigrain bread, so I guess that's why. Um, yeah, and it's just risky, like store bought multigrain bread, I find. Okay, this page has uh, two opera singers uh, with really big uh, mouths uh, uh, singing, so it's interesting. Uh, oh, here's a, here's their list. Uh, let's see what I bought uh, at the bakery: gluten-free multigrain bread, party cake. I had that uh, uh, on my list. Uh, beverages, free trade, coffee cups. I don't have a coffee cup machine. Free trade, I don't have a coffee grinder, so I just buy the ground Trader Joe's coffee. Green apple sparkling water. I don't think I've had a green apple sparkling water. I don't think, I don't think, I, all, all, of all the ones, oh, watermelon kombucha. I'd like to try that. Uh, pomegranate white tea. I drink the white and green mint tea myself. Uh, 12 month age manchego cheese, cheese party tray. Silly. Silly Jean Mon Mozzarella. Those are all coming up later. Chicken burrito bowl, chipotle vegetable. Yeah, maybe we should just go to it because there's too many, half the stuff on here we haven't gotten to. Uh, lemon shortbread bar mix. This isn't in my cupboard, but a couple other, like a pecan bar and some other bar mix from other seasons are in my cupboard, unmade. So one day this will be a uh, lemon bread shortbread mix. Lemon shortbread bar, because I love shortbread uh, with a twist of lemon. And uh, you pull it out of the oven, pour the filling on top, and continue baking. I just looked up the lemon bars uh, for that uh, episode of uh, Good Place, so maybe I just make my own lemon bars. Half salt uh, cashews. The half salt almonds have always been, roasted almonds have always been good. Uh, you see, those are, those almonds are just 50% salt's just fine. Uh, cashews are nuts in the culinary circles. Uh, though some people say they're uh, seeds, uh, botanically. Accessory fruit uh, known as a cashew apple. Uh, let's see, myriad ways to eat it, including Green Chef I had it on the salad last week. Uh, these are 50% less, harvested from dwarf cashew trees, ideal crispness, roasted in rice bran oil with half the salt used in regularly roasted and salted cashews. Yeah, cashews are great. Uh, $7.99 each and every day. Nutty value for sure. You silly gooses. Here's the GT's Organic Watermelon Wonder Kombucha. It's popular, that kombucha, and we're hanging 10 on it. Uh, I may have to see if they still have this uh, Watermelon Wonder. It's buchas, organic and raw, gluten-free, vegan, full probiotics, uh, electrolytes, polyphenols, B vitamins, 5% uh, or, or unsweetened organic watermelon juice, which softens the apple cidery vinegar flavor. Uh, yeah, sounds pretty good. Uh, oven roasted turkey breast. I prefer the Trader Joe's smoked turkey breast, or actually Sophia does. Uh, but this is a good value, two ninety nine. Uh, yeah, I mean they're they're uh, they're like turkeys and hams are a pretty good price, and I think unless you're going to go to some actual deli. Okay, let's see what they have to say about their apple mineral water. Even the bubbliest person benefits from a little excess effervescence. Trader Joe's green apple sparkling mineral water from Stanislaus and Sonoma County. So, oh, wow. Uh, I'll have to try it. Uh, uh, carefully added bubbles and natural green apple flavor. Uh, so maybe I would like this. I don't know. Uh, I always I never have. I always say green apple. But maybe now it's fall. They'll probably stop selling it. It comes in that uh, bottle uh, like all the other ones do, even though they don't have the ones I like, uh, sangria, star fruit, uh, tr tropical, uh, co island colada, and pineapple. Those were my favorites. All gone now. Thanks for nothing, Trader Joe's. <laughs> Maybe I'll try this apple. Uh, soy protein powder, vanilla, or plain. Uh, it's fifteen ninety nine. dollars uh, so that's a little bit of a... A stretch, uh, 23 grams of protein per two-scoop serving, too. So 
can't, uh, but it is soy protein if you're looking for more soy protein. Uh, salmon and sweet potato dog treats. I haven't had try these on Koa. Uh, I don't know, her, her breath's bad enough, I guess. Uh, uh, but uh, cooked sweet potatoes and uh, salmon from northern Scotland. Uh, smoked over natural hardwood. Those are the only two ingredients, uh, doggone it. So it's somewhere between a meal and a tra- training reward. So uh, think about it, but uh, like I said, Koa's breath's bad enough, so... Yeah, three ninety nine uh, for four ounce a resealable bag. Okay, those usually use K cups. Uh, four ninety nine for twelve K cups of uh, Colombian organic uh, free trade coffee. Here's the thing, you know, when I go to uh, places that have K cups, I guess the people, my parents, they don't. And I see my sister. I don't think any of them have a Trader Joe's. Uh, and, you know, when K cup, when the coffee's bad, it's doubly bad to those machines. Uh, you see, what is this? Like burnt, you know, this tastes like burnt uh, pencil shavings. Uh, at least as caffeine, so it can become a tolerable being. But, okay, next up is organic pomegranate white tea, hibiscus flowers, and lemongrass. Uh, Sounds pretty nice. Uh, pomegranate extract, hibiscus, uh, organic lemongrass, round out the flavors. 20 tea bags for two forty nine. I've seen that, but I'm still working through tea from 2014 or whatever when everybody sent me that tea. Uh, Ethiopian Fair Trade Organic Shade Grown Coffee, uh, $9.99 for a 13-ounce can. Sounds great. Um, I just don't uh, have a coffee grinder, and I'm, I'm kind of st- steeped in my way, so drinking coffee. Okay, this one is a hit at my house. Uh, not as a hit, but not as big a hit as uh, the even less expensive, uh, just regular cup of soup, ramen. Uh, but they have miso or chicken ramen soup, and I've had these. Uh, I mean, it, it doesn't have the vegetables, like, uh, the, like the dried meats and vegetables. I mean, I guess this one has chicken, but... Uh, they're good for, like, uh, if you have other leftovers. Um, the two new soups, just a typical, very typical cup of soup, miso ramen and chicken ramen, sturdy paper cups that double as your bowl. Uh, they, oh, they come with, like, a little bit of oil uh, to kind of add it, uh, dried seasonings, uh, and then you just add water. And they're 129 And then, again, if you have some... Uh, vegetables like even if you have the um cruciferous crunch you put that in there with the chicken or say i have the miso miso one with sardines uh actually yeah that's a really good i put in a metal bowl and they put sardine smoked sardines and uh cruciferous crunch in the miso and that's a healthy lunch with like a lot of protein and stuff uh a dutton nut dutton eight bites or date nut bites uh it's another snack, a maximum flavor, uh, almond, blueberry, peanut, uh, cashew, apricot, dot and eight bites, dot and eight bites, uh, bite size price of three ninety nine for a three five point three ounce bag, a uh, cauliflower tabula. I'm gonna try this. It's three to a twelve ounce tub for three sixty nine. I just don't know if I'd go through a twelve ounce tub. Uh, maybe though, because it's got a, oh, they substitute the bulgur couscous with uh, cauliflower. Huh, that could be interesting as a set vegetable or side, especially for a picnic. Uh, and it has less uh, carbs. Uh, so if you're looking at that, sweet plantain chips, I think I've had these and they're pretty tasty, but I'm not a big snacker. Uh, you know, just stick to my desserts, uh, but, but it's one ninety nine. Uh, here's this tub of mozzarella, silagini, silagini, small cherry. Uh, so little pieces of mozzarella. That sounds delicious. That's why I don't buy that. I, I don't know how I can avoid. You know, you make it for your caprese, but three forty nine for eight ounces. The cheese party tray, Colby Jack, Swiss mild cheddar, and uh, pepper jack. I bought this for school lunches before, actually. When you're like too busy, or you don't want to just buy one kind of cheese, uh, yeah, I've had I think it was the end of last school year, not this school year, 
12 months aged in Manchego, uh, 1199 a pound, uh, rainbow wraps, uh, it's like a red beet and uh, flour tortilla wrap, uh, four ninety nine. Uh, rosemary balsamic beef steak tips. I haven't had that, uh, but it sounds pretty tasty. Nine ninety nine a pound. Uh, red bell peppers. I buy those, but those are the best for salad, uh, for roasting. Whoa, here's something I didn't know. Two hundred thirty percent of your daily vitamin C. Wow, that's pretty good. I didn't realize that. Uh, uh, ricotta and lemon zest ravioli. That sounds pretty good, but I don't make a lot of uh, raviolis. Uh, fresh peaches. Uh, Sophie doesn't eat stone fruit, so uh, nectarines my top peach. I mean, my top stone fruit, and then uh, then maybe peach apricot are pretty close. Oh wait, plums second. Polots probably in there. Or organic yellow lentil and brown rice pasta. Uh, sounds interesting. Two ninety nine. Uh, probably won't ever buy that though. Uh, I, I like a brown rice pasta, but uh, something about I guess it's just yellow. I said maybe you should have just called it uh, golden lentils. There you go. Organic golden lentil and brown rice pasta. It just had yellow cocoa batons. We got these. Uh, Sophia loves these. Uh, uh, $1.99 a box. Actually, it's a tube, by the way, Trader Joe's. Get it right. Uh, creamy, crunchy, uh, music in your mouth. Uh, delicate chocolate wafer cookies wrapped in a baton with soup chocolate cream. And then my dad's favorite popcorn in a bag. Organic air pop popcorn. Uh, just a little oil, uh, ever satisfying organic air pop popcorn, popped in uh, batches using uh, uh, three three ingredients: kernels, sea salt, and uh, sunflower oil uh, to get the salt to stick. Uh, or you could get drizzle on some ghee, extra virgin olive oil, smoked paprika, garlic powder, seasoning salt, etc. Uh, one ninety nine for a six ounce bag, and that's with that. That's it for uh, these two uh, fearless flyers. Probably when you hear this, will be in October, and the goal for October will be a on location episode, and then maybe November it'll be. So hopefully, I don't know what the goals will be because right now, October second, I'm just assessing how many credit cards are not working. So then it'll be like. Uh, Will by October 10th, we get back to zero. Or like how many patients we ended last month with. Uh, and that's usually then I assess the goals from there out. Um, but thank you so much for supporting the show. Couldn't do it without you. And I uh, really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, you keep the show going. Thank you so much. Let me tuck you in there. Uh, good night. All right, but this is Scoots tucking you in. If you're li- hearing this message and you're a patron or you're not a patron, you do not want to be missing out on the subscriber summer. We're putting out a ton of extra content for subscribers uh, as a way of celebrating and, and trying to find new ways to keep the show going for everybody and keep it free for everybody, which is a bit ironic, but without support, we, can, we can't keep the show free for everybody. So, um... That's part of subscriber summer, but if you don't have your patron content set up or you're not a patron, you're missing out on it. And I know that uh, only one third of our patrons listen to the bonus content and it's so easy to set up. Uh, You're already listening to this message in a podcast app. And if you become a patron, you could do this and you could just follow along. It's just four simple steps. You take your phone, you know, you already have a podcast app. If you don't already have a podcast app, you use Pocket Cast is a great one to, or to just listen to bonus content in exclusively. Uh, go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron feed, P-A-T-R-O-N-F-E-E-D. And that'll bring you to a page where you log into your Patreon account. Then it'll bring you to a page where it'll say Acast for Patreon. You'll click allow. That's how to connect the bonus content to your podcast app. It'll verify your patron, and then it'll bring up a list of podcast apps. Pick your app from the list, or if you downloaded Pocket Casts, pick Pocket Casts from the list. 
give it a few minutes to load because especially if you're a 10 or 20 dollar patron there's like 2,000 episodes uh in the feeds but uh give it a few minutes to load and then click uh, follow or subscribe and you're good to go so sleep with me podcast.com slash patron feed log into your patreon account click allow and pick your podcast app from the list, uh, and you'll be getting all that sweet, sweet summer. You know, and in addition, the rest of the year, we put out tons of bonus content. And 10 to $20 patrons also get all intro episodes. All patrons get story-only episodes, special edition episodes. 10 and $20 patrons get all-night episodes. So don't miss out. Uh, you are going to want to be a part of Subscriber Summers. Thanks, everybody.